Hello everybody and welcome back to our Wave 8 Star Wars X-Wing unboxings. Today we are going to be diving into the Jumpmaster 5000. Or as I like to call it, the JM5K. The JM5K. <laughs> That's how you get chiseled abs is the Jumpmaster 5000 is what I've been told. Anyway, so we're going to dive into the ship. Out. We're going to take a look at the dial. Then we're going to look at all the different pilots and the upgrade cards that include in the box. So sit back, relax, and join us for a discussion on one of the greatest games Ever. Listen to the sultry tones of the Bun Brothers. So let's start out with the dial. The Tell dial. me about the dial. All right. So this dial is. Bonkers. I bet you it's not good. No, at all. it's insane. It's one of the best so dials it's, ever. It's, it's worth starting out with. This ship is a 360 arc. Okay. So it's a big ship. It's a big ship. It can shoot in a big with circle. A We've never seen this before. Wait. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> that's, that's yeah, why. we have. Uh, but so this dial has. Which makes sense. You see that gun on that thing? Yeah. That right there is what just goes. It will. It will punch you in the face. This Hold model's on. so cool. Undercarriage, got to check it out. <laughs> yep, yeah. yeah. and it's um, got that little thing in the front. Yeah, no, it's, it's good. But, so this dial's like... <clears throat> all right. Okay. It has all of the ones. All, even the ones? Turns, turns banks, turns? forwards. It's got one turn on a big ship. The one turn left is green, Zach. Do you know wait, what I... I've said wait, forever, the best maneuver this, in the game is the one turn. This is the first asymmetrical dial. This is an asymmetrical dial. So one turn, you've been saying, is the best move. A one green turn is, is like... Is obviously the best best The move. roided out version of that. Um, yeah. Which we've learned with the, uh, the Inquisitor's tie, which you can also watch. Oof. We're going to unbox that bad boy Oof. as well. Go ahead. Uh, it's so right. It's got one left turn. It's and right, one, one turn is white. Oh. It's not red. Okay. Like you would expect it to probably be. Um, it has all of the twos. And the turns. And the turns. Is the two left turn green? The two left turn is not green. All right. The two left turn is white. What about two right? Uh, the, oh, no, I'm sorry. It is green. The turns are, the t left is green, the right is white. Now, this is a man who speaks from experience, just so we're yes. I was pretty sure it was green. Anyways, go ahead. Uh, it has two banks. Uh, the two bank to the left is green. Yeah, it's all the green. The two forward is green. Yeah. Uh, it <coughs> also has a two sloop to the left and the right. To the right, it's red, obviously. Okay, if the left then, is green, I'm going to punch a wall. It's not green, it's white. So okay. That's, <laughs> that's still pretty awesome. <laughs> a white a, turnaround I'm gonna is gonna nice. Do a I'm going to do a two signal sloop to the left and then focus. So these guys are going to want to be like to the right of the opponent, right? In theory. Or like Here's, here's the around. thing. What People, is the thing? since this game, or since this ship has come out, have said this ship is not as good at turning right. Which isn't as good at turning right. But it's still one right turn. The only red maneuvers on this dial, Zach, are the right two sloop and the 4K. Which they both should be. Those and are you both. Know what red. You never do with a 360 turret. 4K. A four, especially with a one turn either direction. Um, it's just one of those things that's like. It, like it's not literally, like this ship is bad at turning right. I'm going to show you what a one turn looks like. And I, I hope Ben, the video editing, doesn't just get angry at me doing all kinds of weird stuff. But it's like one turn is literally here, and then here, and then here. One left turn, right? Like yep, this is the day. circle of truth. Yep. For, for you know what you're never doing is ah, uh, 4K. I mean, you might for a weird positioning game, but like, it's it's not the normal uh, thing. I just don't so good. like people say it's not good at turning right, but the fact of the matter is it's not bad at turning right. So what you're saying is that they are probably not exactly correct. Correct. You're wrong. You know who you are. If you follow that and you're watching this, leave a comment and tell us why Tim's wrong. I'd love to hear. Um, so it has those twos. Then it has a three bank to the left. All right. A three forward. Uh, three bank to the right, obviously. All white. Abs. Four forward and a four K turn. All right, so that is a really remarkable dial for a big It's ship, an insane with a 360 dial. turret. I think it's arguably the best dial of this Okay, movie. so let's talk about the baseline stats. I'll get to the first okay. pilot here, which is the contracted scout. He's 25 points. He's got two attack, which makes the turret more bearable. Two agility, okay. Five health, four shields. So he's pretty so he's beefy. Tanky. For 25 points, you're getting nine with two agility nine there. Hole, two agility, mm. two attack with a turret. Also, this being the base level jump master, he has an EPT. It makes sense. An elite. Ah. You know, okay. the, the contracted scout is an elite pilot, obviously. It does make sense. Oh, man, that's crazy. All right, and then he has two, uh, are those called torpedoes? Torpedoes. Torpedo slots. Man, I'm so bad at that kind of thing. He also has a crew slot. Uh, what's their astromech called? Un Salvage astromech. Salvage astromech for the scum. <laughs> and he has the illicit slot. So this guy is rocking. A lot of slots. Sick slots. EPT a plus crew slots. plus illicit. To me, is like, whoo! It's really, woo, really strong. Doggy. It's, there's a lot of ways that you can build this ship. And for 25 points. And 25 points. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on record, and this isn't. I mean, I'm not saying anything bold here. When this guy got previewed, which it was not that, like, far before the release of the ship, the internet went nuts. And the reason is because this ship alone makes scum viable. Oh yeah, 100%. Um, it's also worth noting that the ship has a barrel roll. It's got focus target lock barrel roll. That's so good. <laughs> uh, it's so good. Uh, it's, it's a very good ship. Uh, I've witnessed. Uh, barrel wall, in case you are unaware, barrel with wall. a big ship, barrel wall, barrel with, wall. A, with a big ship, you use the one forward, and instead of using it sideways, you actually use it up and down. 
For, on the barrel roll. So For, it used to be the case of like you barrel roll right and it's like way over here. And then now, but it's, now just it's just like, like it's just that's like, still pretty it's far. Like four movement or whatever. That's but. still a huge like, so my range goes from like this guy over here is maybe not in range or range three to like, oh, now you're in range two. <laughs> now uh, range one. How do you like them apples? <laughs> Anyways, that's um, the contract stat. That's the base yeah, level guy. So that's, what do we get guy. for more points? Uh, for, for two more points, you get Manaru, who is a pilot skill four. You guys might know her as Dengar's wife. Or might not. Uh, you might know her as Dengar's wife. Uh, anyways. You know what's going on in that art? They're saving yeah, our They're homeboy. saving uh, homeboy Aboba. Uh, oh, so uh, she's the same everything except for her ability. Pilot skill four. At the start <clears> of the combat phase, you may assign all focus, evade, and target lock tokens assigned to you to another friendly ship. No range. So I can, if I'm over here, I can assign all of my focus, target lock, and evade tokens to over to this guy over here. That's interesting. It's very good, because it also applies to target locks that your opponent has gotten on you, because you're considered to have that red oh, token. Oh, wow. So you just juke hard. So you can just like, bop. <laughs> bop. <laughs> that's now, V95 actually has that target lock token. So obviously that's a really interesting ability. It's like I have a, any other ship in range one of your ship, and I can pass like a target lock and a focus, mm -hmm. and like unload and like you know you have other ships that have missiles or whatever that need the focus and they don't have the double action yep. built in that's really cool that said i think maybe the most important part of that two point spend is the pilot skill ps4 is a game changer depending on where the meta is at so watch for that if you're expecting you know a lot of two pilot skill gold squadron mar wings or b wings or whatever a four can be important and it might it yep. may not be important mm -hmm. so all right next up we have tell trevura what was that trevura trevura, trevura. Is that what you're sure 30 points, so five more in the contract is count. We get seven pilot skill. That's significant because it does have the EPT, so you can VI up to nine if Bop. you want to play the ace game. We also get the ability, the first time you will be destroyed, instead, cancel any remaining damage, discard all damage cards, and deal four face down damage cards to your ship. So what you're saying is they have to kill this ship twice. In a way. They have to spend two attacks to kill it, right? Right. So you cancel all the damage, you get four damage instead, all the crits go away, important to note. If you have a hull upgrade, now you have two health left. That's the big, the big trick there. Which is saucy. And they have to spend more attacks, right? Like a lot of times, what is good about having more of your eggs across baskets and X-Wing is that <laughs> even, in, baskets, even you know, in an ace build, when I have three aces, you have to spend a whole attack to kill the ship. Even yeah. if he has one health left, you may do four damage through. In the same case here, you're going to have to spend multiple attacks to finish this guy, which Correct. is annoying. And sometimes you might not have that next attack this yeah. round. And so really, I mean, you're getting an extra pilot skill, you're getting the ability. I think this is useful, but it, it's really a min-max game. I'm curious to see what the, the Dengar 9 pilot skill version does. I just saw it over there. Side note, uh, when we go to these unboxings, just so you guys are aware, I try to remain as spoiler-free as possible. So I'm seeing a lot of this stuff, like Dengar, I could not tell you what his pilot ability is. Like, I actually can't tell you. Well, I'm about to. So let's dive in. Uh, for 33 points, you get Dengar. All right, so he's eight more in the contract. Eight skill. more points in the contract, this guy. He's a nine pilot skill. He has an EPT, which is worth noting. He can get to an 11. Which is it's, the it's, thing. It's B-A-N-A-S. It's a real thing. It's bananas. Um, it's very good. Uh, and his ability is once per round, after defending, if the attacker is inside your firing arc, which is his cone of destruction. His cone of joy. Uh, you may perform an attack against that ship. So if you're shooting Dengar, he can shoot back. If you're in his primary arc. Yep. Okay. Which is yeah. not the hardest thing to do because their dial is so Now, fantastic. does he have to do a, a primary back? No, you can just perform an attack. So if you had like a turret, mm -hmm. like a TLT, mm -hmm. you could do this on that? Yeah, you would, you would do it. Uh, this doesn't have a turret slot, but... I'm more. But in theory. But yes. if you had something that uh, could go on You him. could do missiles or whatever. If right. you have him. He has two torpedo slots. Two he torpedo can run the munitions yep. and um, dance, dance across the board. But even if it's not, it's just another primary attack. It's more dice you're getting to throw at your opponent. Yeah. Which yeah, is important. Yeah, for sure. Okay. And nine pilots. Well, cool. This ship's really good. It's, Period. It's pretty good. It's Scum, pretty solid. Scum is here. Scum is staying. And they're only going to get more interesting as time goes on. Yep. So let's dive into the upgrades. First up, we have Rage. Speaking Rawr. of elite pilot talents and EPT, one point has a nice looking um, Trandoshan on it. Action. Assign a focus token to your ship and receive two stress tokens. Until the end of the round, when attacking, you may reroll up to three dice. All right. So this card is insane. Is it? I think so. It's like a free target lock and... But you have to take two stress. Yes, in theory, you do. <laughs> uh, but hear me out. I'm listening. So there's this pilot called a Youngster. He's a TIE Fighter pilot. He says all of your friendly ship, or TIE Fighter ships at range one of him, K-1 
can use his EPT action abilities. Like Rage? Like Rage. So your whole swarm can so rage. So your whole swarm can rage. So they all have a focus token. They can all reroll three attack dice. All right. Uh, then there's also a TIE Fighter called Epsilon Leader that removes the stress from all ships at range one. So you do this, start a combat, they all remove one. Mm -hmm. Next turn, they all go green. You're back in business. Correct. Now, my question for you on that, and I understand that in theory is really great, but most TIE Swarms have Howl Runner. Most this TIE one does not. Because you don't need it, you're raging. You're raging. So th this makes Youngster your, your Howl Runner. Correct. Interesting. So you're saving points. Because I was going to say, if you have Howl Runner and you're rolling two dice and you have a focus, rarely do you need to reroll many of your dice beyond that, right? Like you can't reroll the Howl right, right. or whatever. So. But this way, if you're at range one, you can reroll all three. That's in interesting, man. I also think it's really interesting on any ship that doesn't care about stress, right? Mm -hmm. Which I think we saw some of that. Like, like Tycho? The Tycho. The A Wing? Yeah. So it's cool. I think it's a nice little one point slot. It's and very good. And you get a focus, which is really nice. That's the like. The, the coup de gras? The coup de gras of that. Um, up next, we have the Atani Mind Link. We get two copies of this card. All and right. here's why uh, it's scum only, it's an EPT, it's one point. Looks like Thrawn over there. Uh, it's not. Uh, Hashtag just saying. And it says each time you are assigned a focus or stress token, straightforward. Uh, each other friendly ship with a Tani Mind Link must also be assigned to the same type of token if it does not already have one. So <coughs> the idea being you have an Atani Mind Link on two dudes. Or one more. takes the evade action, the other they takes a the focus, it. they both get a focus. Ah, so like if you had three jump masters with a Tani Mind Link, mm -hmm. then they could focus, evade, and target lock. Well, or they can't evade because they, they don't can't. have evade, I mean. But, there it is. But they could focus, one of them focuses, they all get it. I'm going to break that. Okay, good luck. No, no, <laughs> no, no I want to use that in it's, some manner. I think it's solid. The, the problem with it is the stress. Because if one of them gets stressed, they all get stress. It gives them stress? If they are assigned a focus or a stress token, each other friendly ship is assigned that token if they don't already have one. So if I do a K turn with one of them or a sleep with one of them. Ah, uh, so that's the negative side of that. Or if you stress bot me, they all take one. Ah, uh, stress bot isn't, isn't anywhere these days. I'm just saying. Just kidding. It's I'm everywhere. All right, cool. Next up, we have an old favorite plasma torpedoes. Plasma torpedoes. Torpedoes, three points, four attack dice range, two to three. You have to have a target lock. Spin the target lock, discard this card before this attack. If the attack hits, after dealing damage, remove shield token from the defender. You see this a lot? This is very popular right now. It's yes. It's pretty straightforward. <laughs> We've seen it before. Um, a card we haven't seen before is Gonk. Gonk, Gonk, Gonk. Gonk. He is uh, <laughs> the trash can droid that we've seen in We've love. seen Gonk. We know him. We, we wanted him, him we forever. Didn't know, I didn't know his name. Now I do. Uh, he's a crew. He's two points. Scum only again. He has cool. two actions on him. The first action is place one shield token on this card. Cool. Second action is remove one shield token from this card to recover one shield up to your whole value, or shield value. So essentially, you put him on a ship, every two actions he gets to take, you're getting a shield back. Correct. In theory. So but if you have like a... The real thought process behind that, I would say, is you start in the corner, you go one forward, <coughs> you put a shield on him. You do a one bank, put a shield on him. Oh, go genius. Go one forward, put another shield on him. And then... And then now it's just an shield, action for the shield. shield. See, this is why people are smart. <laughs> it's great. I love it. That's really cool. Um, it's really and cool. If, you're, if you have an APT slot and you're rolling, like, uh, push the limit. Mm -hmm. It's like focus, recover a shield. Or put a shield. Put, put a, yeah, just gain gain a shield. shield. Yep. Yep. That's good. All right. Cool. Gonk's, Gonk's cool. Two points. He's unique, so he can only be on one ship. Gonk. He's a gonkulous. Speaking of cool and unique, how about we talk about Boba Fett? The big B? Yeah, this one was designed by world champion Paul Heaver. Which one was that? Uh, which world championship? <laughs> I don't know. One of three. <laughs> Anyways, Boba Fett, scum only, one point crew. I'm excited about this. Also some of my favorite art. It was in the core set of the card game. And it's really good art. He's about to... Well, we'll, we'll yep. go there later. <laughs> <laughs> After performing an attack, if the defender was dealt a face-up damage card, okay. you may discard this card to choose and discard one of the defender's upgrade cards. That is awesome for one point. So if point. you're dealing them a critical, mm -hmm. you can discard a card. Now, one thing that I love about this card is its synergy with Greedo. What is, what's Greedo? Greedo is the first damage that you deal to someone is face-up. Okay. And then the first damage dealt to you each turn is face-up as well. That's hilarious. But... It's funny because if I just do a normal hit, it's face up, and then I can use Boba Fett. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, I've seen this on like a lamb or against a Lambda shuttle, mm -hmm. who's not rolling in dice. You can use it on the Falcon, get rid of C three PO, R two, Palpatine. I saw someone uh, <coughs> use this to get rid of R two D two off of a Biggs. That's annoying. Because that, before that also they can uh, the integrated eject, action mag. Yeah. Ouch. That's a 
That's a bummer. It's a bummer. Yeah, I guess the smaller ships, I guess the tough part is they usually don't have very much hull. So mm -hmm. a lot of times you'll do all the hull damage in a single yep. turn. So you're not really going to get to apply this. And even if you do, it's like I have a critical on a two health ship. So what's the real value of like? Yeah. No, no, that's completely fair. I think it's a very good card. I think it's going to slot into a lot of things that have a point left over and they don't care about initiative. An open crew slot. Go for it. So why not? Go for it. That's what we um, Looks cool. Cool design. Up next, we have a crew version of Dengar. Dang. He's three points. Scum only. All right. Uh, when attacking, you may reroll one attack die. If the defender is a unique pilot, <coughs> you may instead reroll up to two attack die. So, so it's like an inverse predator. Against uniques. Yeah. No one runs uniques, though. Uh, incorrect. Just kidding. They're everywhere. Uh, yeah, so it's essentially instead even, of the lower even, pilot skills, it's the higher pilot even skills. Even Palp Aces now has Captain Yor in the Lambda shot instead of the Omicron typically. So it's unique. Yep. Yeah. No, it's, this is a very good card. And it's always one attack die, no matter what. Yeah. You can reroll one attack die, period. Seems good. It's, and it's only on attack, right? Mm hmm it's, a, it's the inverse of Lone, or a Predator. Predator. Okay, I mean, I like it. I think, I think it's, it's very good. It's scum only, so it's gonna Again, you're gonna be like a boost. To I them. think that's cool. Scum only, uh, faction only stuff is something I'd love to see a lot more of, mm -hmm. just to give them more identity yeah. and more tools that only their faction really has access I agree. to. All right, now we have an astromech. What are they called again? Salvage astromech. Salvage astromech, I'm gonna get that in my brain. No, you're not. Oh, no, never, <laughs> <laughs> you're right. R5P8, three points. Woo. Once per round, after defending, you may roll one attack die. On a hit, the attacker suffers a damage. On a crit, you and the attacker each suffer a damage. Now, this is really good against things that are high agility. <coughs> so, like, soon to your fell, this is really good against. Uh, it's just like uh, sneaking in free damage is bugatti. It's huge. It is bugatti. It's huge. You only, like, soon to your only has three health. Like, well, and you know what this really does? This gets to the concept I'm trying to talk about literally every time I possibly can, which is the cards that have an impact on the game without ever doing anything. This is the kind of card that prevents Soontir from attacking a ship. Mm -hmm. Because you can't risk Soontir just losing a health to anything. But here's the thing. You're eventually going to have to shoot them. Eventually. But maybe it's like, I'm going to shoot even my Lambda and my Vader and, and not Soontir. Or whatever the case sure. may be, right? But whatever uh, is like... Then I do damage to Vader. Yeah. Uh, or like, picture Whisper. Mm -hmm. It's just bad. <clears throat> now, it is worth noting, this can go on Dingar, who gets to shoot back at you as well. Which is a problem. So you shoot Dingar, he shoots you back, I would have damage. With Dingar, I would 100% take a 1 in 8 chance that I take a damage for a 50-50 that you take a damage. Yep. Oh, All yeah. Day, with 9 health? Day. Every day. Um, it's Regonculus. Uh, <laughs> yes. Up next. You get two of these. We have two copies of the Overclocked R4. All right, it's what's another it do? salvage or out. Blah, 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 blah. It's that another salvage astromech. astromech. Yeah. It's All one right. point. Uh, it says, during the combat phase, when you spend a focus token, you may receive one stress token to assign one focus token to your ship. Okay. So there's really two ways that you can use this. One is to go all out in one round to have a bunch of focus. Like you're taking a lot of fire, a lot of defense. Uh, or <clears throat> just use it to essentially get two focus a turn. Is there... I feel like there's some ship I've seen recently that can still take actions when it's stressed. Is that right? There's, there's Tycho. Oh, you know what the case is? What? Yes? There's some way to abuse this. <coughs> I'll, I'll think of it later. It's like you can get a focus somehow, and then you can just have like 10 stress. And every turn, you can focus every attack and defense. Because you just keep piling on the stress. But somehow, you have to get the focus. Oh, they probably use something to assign him a focus. Yeah, yeah. Some, some ship assigns it or something, yeah. where it's like, and then it's, it's crazy. When you can focus every single attack and defense. It's not bad. That's powerful. And that's, that's when this card's going to get used for one point. I dig it. All right, next up, we have Guidance Chips. This card has made a splash. It's a zero, zero point modification. You get two, right? Mm -hmm. None, none your stack. Modification, once per round, when attacking with a torpedo or a missile, secondary weapon, you may change one die result to a hit result or a crit result if your primary weapon value is three or higher. You know what we call that, Zach? Bugatti. Bugatti. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. <clears throat> so even if you don't have a three primary, just changing any result to a hit just yep. drastically increases your odds of hitting. Yeah, and you, this really, I think, is what was the ceiling linchpin of the triple jump master list that mm -hmm. has been very popular online and yep. in tournaments like the Hoth Open, where you essentially have three jump masters, the contracted scout, they have guidance chips, they have extra munitions, and they have some kind of torpedo on there. And you're rolling four dice, you're getting a target lock for free, like we saw earlier. Mm -hmm. 
after you spend the focus, you're getting to change one of your die results. The, it's like the math behind getting four hits on a, a shot is like 97 percent. Yeah, something like that. So essentially, three jump masters loaded out to the to the nines has 12 damage a turn if they can get the shots off. Six shot shots that are going to almost always do four damage. That's a heck of an alpha strike. It's hard to survive that. But as I've learned, once the alpha strike's over, they're a lot less good. Game on. Um, up next, we have the punishing one. The title. It is Jump Master 5000 only title, right. Jam 5K. And this is, uh, the punishing one is Dango Ship, mm -hmm. specific. Okay. This is 12 points for a title. 12 points. Woo. That's a whole Z95. That is one entire Z95. One entire ship for this title. Better be good. Increase your primary weapon value by one. Tell me why that's worth it. It's probably not. Oh, shoot. Not worth it. According to Tim, I'm going gonna, gonna to dis disagree in a second. The, the place that this is worth it, I think, is on Dengar. <clears throat> because you're getting your primary attack, incre attacked, your attack. primary attack increased by one, and then your return fire increased by so one. So if he gets to shoot back out of his front, you're also getting the extra Correct. Fire, which is really good. Which is very good. Um, but in general, I don't know that this card is worth 12 points. So really, I mean, comparing this to the YT-2400, rocking the heavy laser cannon, and the, is it the title that lets it do it 360? Mm -hmm. So essentially they're paying, is it 12 points? Is it 7 and 5 mm -hmm. for the HLC yep. and the title? So they're paying 12 points to have this kind of an impact on range 2 and 3, 360, whereas this is also including range 1, right? So if you land right here, I get my Except for 3 dice versus 4, four at 2 and 3, but it's 4 dice at range 1. So, and you, and you get the range one different. shot. Because when you see that HLC YT2400, a lot of times, you know, I'm an ace player. So, Vader and Suntier and Inquisitor and stuff are going to like boost and barrel roll into range one so you don't get a shot. Mm -hmm. But they'll, it's, they'll it's different. It. But I, I just don't think that it's worth it. If you're going to do that, just run <laughs> Rebels and run Dash. It's definitely not in the like triple jump master slot list, right? But 100% like, not. If you're running Dingar and you're acing it up and you're like PS12 and like you get to move last, you also run engine upgrade and you can kind of position, I think it's, it could be pretty brutal. It's okay. I, I don't think it's worth 12 points. I'll stand by that. All right. Uh, and then the final card of the pack is a feedback array. Look at that art though. It's an illicit. Woo! We've seen this before. It's two points. During the <laughs> combat phase, instead of performing any attacks, you may receive one ion token and suffer one damage to choose one enemy ship at range one. That ship suffers one damage. So you can just bug zap somebody. Bzz, bzz, one image. Bzz. Uh, it has been FAQ'd that you can't do that if you're bumping a ship, or if you're, uh, you can't do it to the ship you're bumping, I should say. And you can't uh, do it while you're on a rock. Okay, that's fair, that's fair. All right, well that was our unboxing of the Jetmaster 5000. The Jam uh, 5 what's your, what's your final thoughts? Any, it's a there? fantastic ship that is going to make scum skyrocket. Its horn will pierce the sky. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, if you don't already have it, you can get it from us on our web store right here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Also, if you haven't noticed these beautiful uh, debris and asteroids that are now available in acrylic and they're beautiful, and you should check them out. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back with more Wave 8, and we'll see you soon. See you guys. <laughs> are you ready? I need to get the levels ready. Oh, sure. my God. Can you guys talk like normal? <coughs> All right, everybody, <coughs> welcome back to our Wave 8 unboxing series. Today, we're going to be spending the Jump Master time 5K. On the Jump Master. 5,000. Getting fit, man. Getting Ooh. that Jump Master 5,000 on. Bop, See bop. these abs? Bop, 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 bop. Those don't happen overnight. Jump you gotta Master have two abs. Or three Jump Masters to make that happen. Jump Master abs. You ever had Jump Master abs? Because I do. Have you ever put butter on that Jump Master ab? You betcha. It's so freaking good. It's so freaking good. Man, that's, that's probably the range of audio you're going to get from us. <laughs>